What's up, what's up, what's up? How's everybody doing, man? I want to welcome you to yet another episode of the Unpopular Podcast. It's your boy Jalen. And hey, man, it's the end of the year. It's the end of the year. I'm excited. For people that's asking why I got this hoodie looking like this, one, it's cold as hell in the studio for the first time ever. I It has never been this cold. I don't know what's going on. I got two LED lights pointing dead at me, plus the ceiling lights, and it's still cold. I don't know. But, no, my head's not this big. For people that's looking on YouTube, you know what I'm talking about. I got headphones on. Just <laughs> just to let y'all know. But, again, this is the Unpopular Podcast, where I give my unpopular opinion about sports. And with this being, you know, I want to say happy holidays to... All the people that celebrate holidays, for all the people that don't celebrate holidays, happy Monday, uh, happy New Year's. Do 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 not do people like that don't celebrate holidays celebrate New Is New Year's a holiday or is that just a new year? You know, I never I never I don't know. That's that's always been a question I have, but whatever. Again, thank you for tuning to the Unpopular Podcast. This is episode is it twenty nine? Something like that, but today I got something special, man. This I've been bro- I've been cooking this up for a little bit. This isn't gonna be. This is like a special, you can say, end of year special, but not like a review. I was thinking about doing that, like year in review, but that's kind of cheesy since everybody doing that. I'm not saying you know what everybody does, but they do. You know, shouts out to them. Shouts out to all the podcasts out there, all the end of year videos. Y'all do y'all thing. I just didn't want to do that. Not to mention, I haven't been doing this all year. I believe I started this in July, and I've been, you know, going strong since then. So, I don't think I should have done a uh, uh, end of the year review. But what I wanted to do, I wanted to do something special. I wanted to do something that really tested my Sports, no, my basketball knowledge, something that really tested my basketball fortitude. So what I did was, <clears throat> I did sort of like a my all-decade team, but it's a little longer than the decade. It's from, from year two, 2000, all right, from the 2000-2001 season to the 2017-2018 season. I wanted to compile the greatest team of the decade plus. You know? <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's, it's been, what, 19, 18 years, 19 years? But, yeah, I wanted to compile a team that I felt confident was the greatest team of from the two, from the year 2000 to the year 2019. It was challenging, and I didn't, I didn't expect this to be this challenging. I really didn't. I didn't expect it to be as hard as it was. Due to the fact that there's a lot of there was a lot of great basketball players, man. I'm trying to tell you, there was a lot of great basketball players that didn't make this list. There's a lot of great basketball players that didn't even make the honorable mentions. So, yeah, I I, I picked 12 players. I didn't want to cheat, and I felt 15 was cheating because you don't even go into the playoffs with 15 players. Well, I think you do, but you only play like maybe 10 or or, or 11. So I want to do 12 players. I, they didn't have to regulate to, like, I didn't have to have, like, all positions. So I, I could have had all point guards if I wanted. I could have had all centers. Of course, I didn't, but I wanted to create a team. And, and here's the thing. I didn't create, like, the perfect team as in, like, the team that has the greatest chemistry or the team that will have – the greatest role players. No, none of these, none of these players on this on this list are role players. They, I don't. Some of these are selfish. Some of them are not. I don't care. I just the twelve greatest players from year two thousand to year two thousand nineteen is on my team. So I, I challenge anybody. And, and if you don't agree with any of these that I'm going to say. Leave it in the comments, man. Leave it in the comments. If you, if, and the people that text me, I appreciate it. I do appreciate you texting me that have my number person that listens to the podcast. But leave it in the comments, man. I want people to see, you know, engagement. Because there's a lot of people actually that text me and say, hey, good podcast. Hey, I don't agree. This, 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 and this. And we'll have, you know, a conversation in the, 
on text. But I want people to, you know, engage. I want people to see. So if you if you disagree with something or you, you know, you have a certain feel some type of way about something, leave it in the comments. Whether that's YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify. I don't even know if Spotify has comments. But Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, just leave it in the comments. I appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you listen to it on iTunes or Spotify or any other platform, I will please give me five stars, you know. This and a third. Alright, I've been going on a little too long. Here's my well, here are the honorable mentions first. These are the these are the players that didn't make the cut but could have, you know, or or was outside looking in. Number one, I'm a all right, and I'm not saying like these these honorable mentions are in order. These are just, you know, my honorable mentions. But I have to one honorable mention has to go to Russell Westbrook in 2016, 2017. Again, he was the second. He became that year. He became the second best. Well, the second player ever to average a triple double the entire season. And that's just, that. Not only is that crazy, that. To be the second person to do it out of a league full of great, great players, that that lets you know. You know what I'm saying? Like, you are one of the best basketball players of a generation. Now, do I think he plays the right way? As energy-wise, yes. I mean, he's going to give you 100% whenever he touches the floor, so shouts out to that. But, you know, we... The problems with Russell Westbrook are well documented. Sometimes he's hard to play with. Sometimes he doesn't make the right pass. Sometimes he doesn't pass at all. Sometimes he he takes ill-advised shots or bad shots in bad times, bad situations. And that that all of that is what I took into consideration while I was compiling this list. But I can't, all right, it started. It got a little hot. <laughs> But what I'm saying is I can't, I can't, just because he has all those, I guess, quote unquote negatives, he became the second player ever to average a triple double. And then he followed it up by becoming, I think, the only, not the, I think he became the only player to average a triple double in two consecutive seasons. So he didn't make the list, but shouts out to Russell Westbrook, man. Russell Westbrook was was he he's that dude man he 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 plays with reckless and ban- abandonment and again sometimes it hurts the team sometimes it, it, it a lot of times it helps but to be one of the top 12 players of 2000 to 2019 I don't believe so and that also kind of brings me into my second honorable mention was 2017 2018 James Harden that that year paired with, well, James Harden paired with Mike D'Antoni was sort of like a cheat code. Um, they, James Harden is one of the one of the greatest offensive players the league has ever seen. One of, I'm not saying is, but one of. And that year, along with Mike D'Antoni and along with Chris Paul, it just unlocked James Harden to another level. He led the he won he won the MVP that year, as well as Russell. Who, uh, Westbrook won in 2016, but he won the MVP that year. He led Houston all the way to the Western Conference Finals, and they were just a game away of be, of dethroning the Golden State Warriors. No, he isn't the greatest defender, but he's one again. He's one of the greatest scorers we've ever seen, as well as and people say that getting to the line is not a talent, you know. Like, oh, all he does is, is draw fouls and and gets to the line. That is a talent. That is hard to do. Not, look, look at, and I'm not saying he's better before I say this, but look at players like Kevin Durant. Or look at players like Paul George. Look at players like LeBron James who... They might, they might not, well, LeBron James does. Players that drive a lot of the time and don't get the calls. While they are still great, James Harden has a way of drawing the defense in, make, forcing you to foul him, and then forcing the, the refs to make a call. Do I think James Harden is – do I think a lot of those times he, he over embellishes? Yes, a lot of times he does, but he still draws fouls, and that still helps his team win. 
So I can't I can't take that away from me. He won, I mean, he won the MVP. And they were they were a game away from beating Golden State. So he had to go on the list. Uh oh, and and these all right. So Another person, when I was talking to somebody about this list before I continue, the years that I give are the years that I think were their best years. It could be debatable if you think their years, you know, there were other years that were better. But when I say, when I said, to, you know, Russell Westbrook 2016, 2017, I said that in 2016, 2017, that was the best Russell Westbrook we've seen. So that's that's where I give the years. Um Another person I want to give an honorable mention to, and, and I didn't give a year for this one because it was too challenging, but Tracy McGrady. Tracy McGrady is one of those people that was robbed of injuries, whether it was a back injury, knee injuries, shoulders injuries. Like, Tracy McGrady was always injured, but when he wasn't injured, he was one of the best players the league has ever seen. In fact, there were years when there was a couple of years when we debated who was better between Tracy McGrady and Kobe Bryant. Like Tracy McGrady was that good, especially on offense. You know his Orlando years, and of course the the Rockets years, especially when Yao Ming uh, pretty much destroyed his foot. Tracy McGrady came in and was well, he didn't. Well, Tracy McGrady just destroyed. And it would it would suck for me to leave him off this list, at least honorable mentions. I had to leave him off. I had to leave him off the list because he dealt with injuries way too much. He got injured way too many times. That's one reason why I left Chris Paul off this list. Chris Paul is one of the greatest little big. I mean, little big man. Ha! <laughs> one of the greatest point guards to ever play, but. He has not only has he been injured a lot, especially in playoffs. Sometimes he comes up short. You remember the OKC series when Reggie Jackson alone beat him. You remember the Houston Rockets series when Houston Rockets was dead, about about to be out, about to be down. What three one, and Houston came all roaring back and, and won the series. So. That's one I had to put that against uh, Chris Paul. A couple other people. I'm, I'm gonna just a couple other people that didn't make the list that I wish was Dirk Nowinski. He, I mean, and most of these players. In fact, every player that I've said so far are hall are either currently in the Hall of Fame or former Hall of Fame or not former or will be a Hall of Fame soon. But Dirk is Dirk, especially in 2011, 2000, when when he pretty much de- like beat the Heat himself. Now, of course, they had Jason Terry, they had Tyson Chandler, they had Jason Kidd, but there was no reason why. Well, he was the only reason why the Dallas Mavericks beat Miami Heat. He. Miami Heat, people forget, man, that was arguably LeBron James' athletic athletic prime. Now, yes, LeBron James pretty much choked that series. And he's come out and admitted he's done that. But Dirk was incredible. Not to mention the series before when he dethroned Kevin Durant in the Oklahoma City Th- Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook in the Oklahoma City Thunder. Dirk, it, it was tough leaving Dirk off, but I had to leave him off because my my squad is a beast. I, you know what? I want somebody to run up on my squad, run up on my squad basketball wise. I man, Paul Pierce, honorable mention, uh, especially 2008 when the big three formed. Paul Pierce, Paul Pierce is when when we think about the Boston Celtics. Of course, we have. Larry Bird, we have Bill Russell, we have, you know, Bob Cousy and the great teams, but you don't go too far without without recognizing Paul Pierce as one of the greatest one of the greatest Celtics to ever play. So, you know, I, I it, it would it would I would it would behoove me <laughs> behoove me to leave out Paul Pierce. And 
I had to get this, and this is just a hometown. This is a hometown uh, favorite, but I had to, 2005, 2006 Gilbert Arenas. That look, Gilbert Arenas was one of the original heat check guys. As in Gilbert, Arenas, in fact. We all, many people that, of course, watch sports remember when he gave Kobe 60. A couple of those games, a couple of that, you know, a couple that season he had a couple of 50 point games. A couple of, in fact, I believe he had a 50 point game against LeBron. Not saying he was better than him. What I'm saying is Gilbert Arenas is a, he's like a, he's like a folk hero for, for Washington. Yes, the way he ended. Or the way his career ended was was wild, but Gilbert Gilbert Arenas will always be remembered in the district, man, as one of the greatest w- wizards to ever play. Again, I, I didn't like how he ended, of course, and it definitely should have ended differently. But and no, he didn't lead us to a championship or anything. But he did lead us to the playoffs a couple of him, along with Karan Butler, Antoine Jameson, Brennan Haywood when he was good. <laughs> Gilbert Arenas is that dude, or was that dude, man? I even listened to his uh, podcast, too. It's, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, he'd be talking like he'd he be, he be, <laughs> he be BSing sometimes, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good listen. But. Yeah, I had to leave. I had to leave Gilbert Arenas off, but I had to give him honorable mentions because that's my dude. But is it more honorable mentions? I wanted to put Derrick Rose in there, but that was like a two-year, two-season thing, unfortunately. Uh, oh, Anthony Davis, 2017-18, Anthony Davis. The, he was so close of making my team over the over somebody, but. He just like statistically wise, he's one of the he's one of the best, at least power forwards to ever play. But he he hasn't really done much, and I know it's probably because the team around him, but he hasn't done much. As in accomplishments wise, he's been to the playoffs twice. Now what he did last year was incredible, and that's why I put it on the list. You know, going through. Going through uh, Portland, and wow, they they didn't really stand a chance against Golden State. He played out his mind in Golden State. It, it just, but I couldn't put him on my list because, again, he he just needs to sh- he needs to show me more. I believe towards the end of his career, we will look at him as one of the greatest power forwards to ever play towards the end of his career but right now he's growing and I'm not saying he's like not good right now he's just he's just he's growing and he just hasn't grown to this list yet so without further ado uh I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a quick break and we're gonna get to this list again this is my all decade plus team uh I just gave the honorable mentions and uh I'm going to be back. We'll, we'll, we'll kick this list off. Let's go. So, to make it on this list, you have to be dang near spectacular. There ain't no damn near. You have to be spectacular in something that you do. Um, you have to be groundbreaking, and this is this is of course this isn't the end all be all list, but this is my list. All right, this is my all decade team, and of course it's a little longer than a decade, almost two decades, but I don't care. Just let me let me let me have this. <laughs> this team is full of killers, man. <laughs> like, and this, yo, you don't understand how hard it was to compile nearly 20 years, like 12 players in nearly 20 years. I was thinking, ah, I should put this player in because, I mean, he's a perfect rope. No, but then I believe that player out, he's definitely better than him. So it was tough, man. This was tough. But without further ado, 
Let me crack off. Crack off. What? <laughs> Let me. I mean, let's let's just, let's just get this started. This is my all decade plus team. It's nearly maybe I should call it all two decades because it's nearly two decades. All right, whatever. My all decade team at point guard. I had to go with 2015, 2016 Stephen Curry. That year, now no, they didn't win the championship that year. That was the year that they, of course, lost infamously 3-1 to the Cavaliers. But when we talk about, and I talked about this on a on a on a podcast a while ago, Stephen Curry. It, is one of the most influential players the NBA has ever seen. Not only has he changed the way that we look at NBA, he changed the way that the NBA is played. In fact, there was a, a article that came out a couple days ago saying that the the league is considering adding a four point line. They would never think about that if Steph Curry wasn't who he is. Also, when we when we talk about what Steph Curry has done, that year he won his second straight MVP, becoming the first unanimous MVP. He that he also became one of three point guards to ever win the MVP more than once, joining Steve Nash and Magic Johnson. That year he averaged thirty one points thirty. Point one, I'm sorry. 30.1 points per game, pretty much seven rebounds, and two assists. He also joined the 50 40 90 club. And he led the team with the greatest record in NBA history, regular season record, at 53 and 9. That's just that season. And, and it was tough because statistically, Curry might be having the greatest season he's ever had now. Like in 2018, 2019. <laughs> But 2015-16, excuse me, I'm a little sick. In 2015-16, Curry was, he was crazy. Like, we remember the game when he was in OKC. Or we remember the the multiple 50-point games. Hell, he, he killed go, he killed Washington. Well, that's pretty much a, a holiday. Every time he comes to Washington, he pretty much puts on a freaking show. But. That Curry was was undoubtedly one of the greatest basketball players we've ever seen. Now, many people say Chris Paul is better career. I don't believe so, and, and that might be a hot take. I really, I really don't give a damn. I don't think Chris Paul's career is better than now. Yeah, maybe it's, it's definitely longer than Curry's right now, but I don't think Cur- Chris Paul's career is better than Curry's. In fact, if you ask me, and I'm not just saying this because I'm a, you know, I guess I'm a little younger. There are people that always say I don't know sports or something. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I have a whole sports podcast. If you don't believe I listen to sport or watch sports and don't listen. But if you ask me, I think Stephen Curry is top five point guard right ever right now. That's with the Magic Johnson. Not saying he's better than them. I'm just saying that's with the Magic Johnsons, the uh, Jason Kidd's, the Steve Nash's, the the Chris Pauls, the John Stockton's. Like Curry has made his way or made itched his name into NBA history or NBA lore already, and he's still going. He's still climbing. He's still getting better. Again, 2015, 2016, we saw the Curry, and we saw the player that was transcendent. Just and, and I, I'll go back to it. Just look at the game where they beat OKC. Look at everything that happened that game, and and everybody knows what I'm talking about the OKC game. But Curry, they were down like ten to, or they were down like twelve points. They were pretty much down the whole game. They were getting dominated. But Curry was still on Curry was on fire from the jump. Curry got injured. People forget Curry fell on Russell Westbrook's leg or foot, twisted his ankle, had to leave the game. 
Went back to the locker room. Came back. Didn't play for a good maybe three minutes. Got back in the game. And led his team back from, I believe when he got back in the game, they were down like 11. Led them to overtime after the big shot that he hit. And was it overtime? No. It wasn't even overtime. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. No, it wasn't. He hit the big shot in the game. And that's just one game. Man, Curry was so revolutionary. Curry is so revolutionary. And everybody, hell, you see it in, you see it in your local recs, man. People just coming past half court jacking. They wouldn't do, that. Steph Curry, man. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that he's the greatest point guard ever. Do not hear me say that. Hear me say that. From 2000 to 2019, Curry has been, to me, the greatest point guard of that in that span. And if you don't, hey, it, the proof is pretty much in the putty, man. He's dealt with injuries. He's dealt with with. I mean, he's not the biggest player ever. No, he's and he's not the greatest defender ever. Don't get me wrong. Hell, even that season, 2015-2016, he was the steals leader. He he led the league in points and steals. And I believe that's the that's the year he broke the. Uh, yeah, it is the year he broke the NBA record with hitting 402 threes in the regular season. And that's not incredible. I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, you know. I don't know what you think is incredible. You know, I, I don't know. But that that Curry is one of the greatest Currys we've ever seen. And one of the greatest players we've ever seen. So am I, uh, am I, am I shooting guard spot? Or my next player, let me say that. This was... This was one of the easiest picks I've ever picked in my life. And that was 2005-2006 Kobe Bryant. I'm not going to stay on Kobe for long because I don't need to. Let me just throw out three stats out there. There was a 14-game span. A 14-game span. When Kobe... Bean Bryant in 2005 and 2006 averaged 46 points, six rebounds, four assists, and two steals. There was a stretch when he scored. I believe it was six. It was either four or six straight 50 point games, 50 plus point games. Of course, we have the 81-point game against Toronto and Jalen Rose. Shouts out. And that season, the 2005-2006 season, Kobe averaged 35 points for the entire season. You know, I think you know, looking at the totality of careers, I would say that Michael Jordan was the greatest scorer, one of the greatest scorers to ever, no, was the greatest scorer to ever play in the NBA. However, in 2005, the 2005 2006 Kobe Bryant, to me, was the most unstoppable scorer of all time. And the thing, the thing is, I remember a lot of people would would you know go up to the fact that he kind of he he pretty much quit in the playoffs, right? The media was complaining that he wasn't passing enough, so he just he just quit against Phoenix and they lost. But and a lot of people get you know say because I have a hot take, I guess one of my hot takes is Kobe Bryant to me is not a top 10 player of all time. Now, when people hear me say that, 
they they hear, oh, you think Kobe's trash? No, no, not at all. Kobe's definitely top 15 player. Hell, he might even be 11. He could be. You, we could, we, you could talk me into putting him top 10. But Kobe is still arguably one of the top. You know, arguably, Kobe is top three scorers of all time. And in that 2005-2006 season, he was number one. Like, <laughs> no if ands, or buts about it. Kobe, Kobe mastered the art of the bad shot. Kobe would take so many bad shots, dude, but he'd make them. Kobe made them. So, <laughs> you know, leaning shots, he... he You'd have four players on him. He still shoot the ball and make it. Kobe, Kobe was, Kobe was tough, man. And that that year, that Kobe was. It might not have been the most efficient Kobe, but that that Kobe was 2005, 2006. Kobe was one of the greatest things I've ever seen in my life. And I'm, I'm man, that Kobe was crazy, bro. <laughs> like. It's not even funny how how good Kobe was that year, and the team sucked. That was just, that was a Smush Parker year, I believe. They were trash, trash. But that Kobe, and he, cause he, I mean, he pretty much had to score that much. He had to average thirty five a year just to squeak into the playoffs. Now. Of course, he pretty much quit on the team in the playoffs because he was like, yeah, this team's trash. But that 2005-2006 Kobe was a monster. Uh, you see, so everybody knows where my next player is. Everybody knows it's going to be LeBron James at the small forward. The argument was, and the question was, which LeBron was I going to do? I could have, I could have, Put in 2008, 2009 LeBron. The first year they went to the playoffs. I mean, the first year they went to the finals. You know, that year he, he dropped 25 straight points on Detroit to win it. Um, that LeBron was incredible. I even could have done last year's LeBron. Was statistically, he was one of the greatest players ever last year. Had a 51 point game or 53 point game. It was 51 or 53 in the uh, in the finals. And if it wasn't for J.R. Smith's and which people people never put the and, but and George Hill blunders, they they would have beat Golden State in that game. They I don't think they would have won the series, but they would have won that game. You have the two uh, the 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 2015 2016 LeBron. Which one, you know, completed the ultimate comeback and beat Golden State in the finals along with Kyrie Irving and a healthy Kevin Love. But I had to go with the 2012-2013 LeBron. This LeBron, this was after the year they lost. Or they pretty much, yeah, they, they collapsed against Dallas in the finals. The whole world was killing LeBron. I remember, I remember there were reports saying that LeBron will never, never win a ring after that. I remember reports saying that LeBron's legacy is destroyed because of that. I remember reports because if, if people don't really understand how bad he was and looked, especially in the fourth quarter of fourth quarters of that finals, man. 2011 NBA Finals, I, he needs to forget. But 2012, 2013, he was on another level. He he won this. He look that year, Miami Heat. He led Miami Heat to a 27 game win streak. If people forget, I believe that's like third all time. He averaged in the regular season 27 points, 7 rebounds, and 8 assists. Of course, that year, they ran it back, went to the finals against Kevin Durant and OKC, and they ultimately won 4-1. They, 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 destroy, they destroyed Kevin Durant. Okay, they, they weren't ready. They, they were not ready. Like, like, the first game was really good. 
First game, OKC won. Durant played out. And, and Durant played out his mind that, that series. It was just nobody else did. But LeBron James, in the playoffs, he averaged 28-8-8. Eight, and eight. Of course, he became the finals MVP. Wait. Wait a second. I might be wrong. I might be wrong about something. Hold up. Hold up. Don't hold me to it, people. Don't hold me to it. I'm sorry. Boom. 2012-2013 was when Miami Heat played the Spurs. Yes, played the Spurs. And that was the big shot with Ray Allen. I'm sorry. Uh, I was, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry I was tripping. It's been a long day. I ain't going to hold you. But um, 2013, he won his – that was the second championship. Uh, they won. He became finals MVP. And the thing about that year that was so crazy was it was pretty much a foregone conclusion early on that, oh, this is a different LeBron. <laughs> this is – you know all the, mon you know, montages and highlights of, of – LeBron James and, and D-Wade throwing all these crazy lobs and stuff. Most of that came in the 2012-2013 season. LeBron was, was oh, man, he was, it, it was, it was something, something to see. LeBron James was not playing with nobody that year. I think that year he pretty much was at his physical apex and athletic apex. And he was hitting threes. I believe that year he shot, like, 35% from three. It was 2011, 2012 that they, that LeBron and them beat uh, Kevin Durant and the Oklahoma City Thunder. I just want to correct myself for the record. But, and the thing about that LeBron was we, so, Many people were saying, especially that time, I remember, like, clear as day. And people say it to this day, but it was a lot louder than that. A lot louder than that LeBron James isn't even as good as Kobe. Or there's still arguments to, is Kobe the best player in the league? Or is LeBron the best player in the league? Not only did 2012, 2013 shut the door on that. For a lot of sane people, they looked at it was like, oh, hold up. <laughs> LeBron James might be the greatest player ever. Or LeBron James, I'm not going to say greatest player ever because, of course, there's still Michael Jordan. But a lot of people were like, yo, Kobe was never this good. Not even not even the 2005, 2006 Kobe, who, who was scoring-wise way better than LeBron, but... What we witnessing is something unheard of. That 2012-2013 LeBron will go down as one of the greatest players ever. Top five greatest players ever. LeBron, of course, I think top one or two greatest players ever. But 2012-2013 was his apex. Moving forward. The point guard, power forward, I had to put Tim Duncan. I mean, even though he's born, and that was 2003, 2, 2003, Tim Duncan. I mean, yes, Tim Duncan's born as hell. Tim Duncan's Mr. Fundamental. He's never had, he's never had that game was like, yo, like, yo, Tim Duncan's the, like, Tim Duncan's that dude. In fact, I think Tim Duncan... All the people that say Tim Duncan's their favorite player ever are all Spurs fans. I don't think there's one person outside of San Antonio that has Tim Duncan as their favorite player ever. Tim Duncan was just he just he just made the right plays, man. <laughs> Tim Duncan Tim Duncan was able to he perfected the bank shot. He really perfected the mid-range shot. And he was one of the greatest power forward defenders the league has ever seen. 
In 2002, uh, the, him and the Spurs, or he and the Spurs, however you want to say it, won the NBA championship over the Nets, which was, it was clear as day that was a mismatch. Like, that series as a whole was, was not even close. And, of course, he became the two. That year, he became the regular season, 2002 MVP, finals MVP, I mean, MVP, regular season. I believe he won the finals MVP, too, because, I mean, it's Tim Duncan. And game six, I want to highlight of the NBA finals. When Tim Duncan scored 21 points, he had 20 rebounds, 10 assists, and 6 blocks. My man was well on his way for getting a quadruple double in the NBA Finals. People remember, you know, people forget. Like, we, people look at, look at the old Tim Duncan, the slower Tim Duncan, who was still good, by the way, and still won a championship in 2013, 2014, but... People look at Tim Duncan like, yo, Tim Duncan, he's always been slow. And he has always been slow. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. Cole, Tim Duncan's always been slow. But there was a time when he was yamming on people. Especially back in the day when he first came to the league. Him and David Robinson, he was, yo. Tim Duncan was, was, nobody was safe against Tim, man. And not even, not only that, he's always played defense. Even until the end, he always played defense. He always kept his body right, which, you know, that's that's very important. He was never flat. In fact, he's, he'd probably go down as number one worst NBA dresser of all time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he's probably going down as that. And... There's, there's not much bad I can say about, In fact, there's nothing I can say bad about Tim Duncan In 2000, 2002, 2003 was the apex Now, Tim Duncan and, and, and like LeBron James as well They had a longevity Like, they're, they're, they didn't really have Until Tim Duncan to the end And LeBron James, maybe his first season But they never really had a bad season Tim Duncan never had a season where you were looking at like, yeah, Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan sucks, or LeBron sucks, or Kobe sucks. Well, towards the end, you know, with all the Achilles for Kobe, but Tim Duncan was crazy, man. And and people really, it's like it's it's kind of like people really discredit him a lot because he wasn't flashy. In fact, I was talking to this guy, and he's a grown man. I was, you know, I understand people like, oh, he's a child. No, I was talking to a grown man that loves sports, like watches sports religiously, and said, my man, my man really said that Tim Duncan is not even top five because he's flashy, like top five power forwards. Because he's not flashy, or he didn't he didn't have a signature play or a signature move, which he had the bank shot, which I kind of killed him with. But that's what I'm saying. If you say that Tim Dung is not top five or not the best power forward ever, you you got a lot. I mean. Either you don't know sports or you just hating. Because Tim Duncan, while he's not the best, it's you know what it's like. Tim Duncan's like butter. While it's it, it does it's not the most flashy item in the kitchen. Or sometimes you don't even taste it when you eat it. But butter's so undefeated. It's crazy. Like butter like butter can turn your team from a bland party to that was some really good food. <laughs> People don't understand. Like it's it's just essential. It's it's essential. So my, my center the center was pretty easy too. I, I had Shaq. Shaq in two thousand two thousand one. He I mean he's the most dominant player in my opinion the most dominant player ever. Nobody, because the Shaq made everybody look bad, bro. 
Shaq was dunking on people. He was dunking on people so bad. I remember he dunked on that dude and, like, pushed him out the stands, like, <laughs> and, of course, the guy got mad and everything. Well, what, what can you do with Shaq, man? Seven, seven feet, 350 pounds. Um... I think, though, the two th- I mean, 1999, 2000 season was his best season, but that doesn't fit the criteria of this uh, of this list. <laughs> so, what can you do? But sh- and no, Shaq couldn't shoot free throws at all. No, and, you know what? And you know what's crazy? Which just really came to my mind. I say that, and I have to bring put in those caveats because of Steph Curry. We look at the NBA now, and you have to be able to shoot. Not only do you have to be able to shoot, you have to be a big man that can shoot. Look at all the look at all the great, the good big men in the NBA right now. How many of them can't shoot? Hassan Whiteside, the man's fight. Like there's minute, there's days he'll play 25, 30 minutes. There's days he'll play five. Marcus Shaw, Marcus Shaw learned how to shoot. Demarcus Cousins can shoot. Joel Embiid can shoot. Al Horford with that ugly ass shot, he knows how to shoot. Anthony Davis, like that is because of Curry, and that's why I always say, "Ah, oh, well, he couldn't shoot." But that's that's why Curry's on this list. But back to Shaq. Shaq was on another level. Shaq, Shaq to me. Is undebatably a top three center of all time. It's either, and I'm not in no particular order, it's Wilt, Kareem, and Shaq. Let me just, let me just, uh, all right, in the 2000-2001 season, Shaq averaged 29 points, 13 rebounds, and three blocks a game. And we don't have to talk about the finals yet because they, they beat Allen Iverson in the, in the Sixers in the finals. But let's talk about the Western Conference Finals one, one minute when they played the Kings. In game one, Shaq had 44 points, 21 rebounds, and 7 blocks. He followed that up with a 43-point game and 20 rebounds. Look, people can debate who the best, greatest center is. And you know, you know you've done something great in your career when... You can go on the top center. Like, when you talk about the top centers ever. Like, if somebody names their top five centers of all time. Shaq will always be in this list. If they're not. If Shaq's not in their list. Don't listen to them about basketball. Like, at all. Shaq, is, oh, Shaq will go down in my eyes as, a, as one of the three greatest centers ever. And one of the top ten players. Because he was the most dominant player ever, if you ask me. Nobody could stop Shaq. Even if you tried to foul him, people fouled him a lot. But they were mostly and ones. Now, no, he really didn't make the free throw. But he would still give you two points. So... I had to put it. I didn't know what Shaq. Uh, I kind of do. It was it was 2000, 2001. Even though I think 1999 and 01. I mean 1999 and 2000. Shaq was a little better than 2000 and 2001. But hey. So. Jeez. Oh, that was my my top five. So for the good math people, oh my goodness, hold up. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Oh, man. I'm not editing this out either. <laughs> I'm choking over here. Um, whew. <sighs> We good. So that was my top five. Uh, to, to reiterate, 
What's a recap? I had at the one, the Seth Curry, 2015-2016. The two, I had 2005-2006, Kobe Bryant. The three, I had 2012-2013, LeBron James. At the four, I had 2002-2003, Tim Duncan. And at the five, I had 2000-2001, Shaquille O'Neal. So for the first person I have on the bench is Kevin Durant, and let me talk about let me talk about why this was just like just like uh, LeBron James. This was difficult. I ended up going with the 2013-2014 KD, but I don't know if that's the best KD we've seen. I think the best KD we've probably seen is the 2016-2017 KD. No, he didn't average the same numbers as 2013-2014. And yes, in 2013-2014, KD won the MVP. But when we're talking about efficiency, we're talking about percentage-wise, we're talking about flow. That 2016-2017 KD was on another level. In fact, Playoff KD we saw was arguably one of the greatest basketball players I've ever seen. Especially in the finals, man. That KD was crazy. <laughs> that jeez, man. But I had to go with 2013-2014 because of a couple things. One, like I said, the MVP holds weight. That was, you know, he he won the MVP. Uh he led he led the NBA in scoring. I believe that was the fourth time that year, or second time, or third time he did it. That year he averaged 32 points a game, seven rebounds, and six assists. And that was and that was that was the year that because KD was at his his. Apex that in turn elevated OKC to their apex. That was one of the greatest OKCs we've ever seen. 2013, 2014. Now, oh, what about the one with James Harden? Yeah, okay, that was good too. But James Harden was still young, and James, that James Harden is not the James Harden that we've seen today. Don't get it twisted. And another thing that I'm 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 gonna just say quickly. I hate when people say, "Yo, if OKC would have kept James Harden, Russell Westbrook, and James uh, and Kevin Durant, all three would have they that's three MVPs." Look, James Harden is playing the way he's playing because he does not play alongside Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant is playing the way he plays because he's not alongside James Harden and Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook plays the way he plays because he's not alongside Kevin Durant and James Harden. That's all I'm saying about that. But I said this in a podcast earlier. Uh, it was one of my first podcasts. I believe it was like episode one or two. But I think Kevin Durant is... The second greatest power forward, small forward ever. Now, yes, Larry Bird was great, and I'm not saying that Larry Bird was trash. And yes, you have Julius Irving, you have you know Elgin Baylor, you have Prime Carmelo. But Kevin Durant, to me, like like I, I always say, this is the second greatest small forward ever. In 2013, 2014, he was at his apex. My man was hitting crazy, like. You remember that he he had game winners against Toronto. He had game winners against Orlando. He, I think that's the year that he killed Golden State for like 50, 50 something points. He, he fifty six points. He man, that Kevin Durant was on a, on a on a on a like his his ascension. Like his his apex is so much higher than so many other people's is crazy. That Kevin Durant, you know what's crazy? That year there was no question who was number like who was number one for MVP. Kevin Durant put that to bed early. 
I think the the biggest suspense was I think it came down to the end of the year, either that year or the, or the next year, which who was going to be scoring champ between him and Carmelo Anthony. But when we talk about MVP, yeah, nah, no. Kevin Durant had that locked up. He he had that locked up. So. You know, my first player off the bench is 2013-2014, Kevin Durant. My second player off the bench. Now, before I keep going, these are no order. I'm not, you know, except for the the top players, like my starting five. But these are no order off the bench. I'm just, I'm just talking. We just, we just talking. We're, we're like, like 45 minutes in. We're just talking. Uh, so the next player off the bench. Is my ultimate player, my favorite player of all time, Allen Iverson, 2000-2001. And let me, and I've I've gone ad nauseum about why you know Allen Iverson is my favorite player of all time. I've talked about his legacy compared to Curry's legacy. I've talked about that ad nauseum. But let me just name you a couple things he did in 2001-2002. Or 2000-2001. In a league where Kobe was playing, Shaq was playing, he won the MVP. In the playoffs... He led past the Bucks team, who was, as a team, better than Allen Iverson and the Sixers. But he beat them in the Eastern Conference Finals to win, to go to the finals. Then Allen Iverson had one of the greatest and one of the most memorable game ones of all time in NBA in, in NBA Finals. Scoring 48 points and 6 steals against... One of the all-time greatest teams of all time in the 2000-2001 Lakers. That Lakers had Kobe, Shaq, uh, Robert Ory, um, Derek Fisher, I believe, was on that team. No, I don't know if Derek Fisher was on that team. No. They did have Ty Lue. <laughs> They had Ty Lue. I think they had a Horace Grant on that team, too. No, they didn't. They had Ty Lue, though. We all know about Ty. And that that right there is one of one of Iverson's most iconic moments. You crossing up Ty Lue, making him fall, hitting the shot over him, and then stepping over him. That's I think that that play that that play is why. Someone stepping over somebody is so disrespectful because of that play. People wouldn't care if it didn't happen to Ty Lue. In fact, it's cause you got Ty Lued. My man got a got a whole play in the NBA and it's disrespectful. <laughs> and people forget, like when people think about Ty Lue, they think about that step over. Ty Lue was actually a solid player, man, in the NBA. Like Ty Lue was a good player, but now, anytime ever talks about Ty Lu, oh, the and that the guy Iverson stepped over. <laughs> man, Allen Iverson was cold, man. That that whole entire season, he averaged thirty-one points, five assists, and four. I mean, and four rebounds. Like Iverson, it will go down as one of the most unstoppable scores ever. And he was short. I mean, it was like six feet, if that. Iverson is a trendsetter. Iverson changed the way that we looked at NBA from, you know, Iverson changed the way look changed the way we looked at NBA. Iverson will go down as one of the greatest scorers ever, one of the one of the greatest point or, you know, guards ever cuz you can debate if he was a point guard or shooting guard. But Allen Iverson, there was I wouldn't be me if I didn't put Allen Iverson in this list. I just wouldn't. That's my favorite player ever. If you don't like it, hey, leave it in the comments. Hey. <laughs> but that's Iverson, man. That Iverson. You know, the worst, the craziest thing about that Iverson, or the, 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 the I guess, exclamation point of that Iverson, is 
I can almost bet <laughs> no one that's not a, like that's not a Laker or a Sixers fan. I'm not gonna say no one because I can do it, but it it's, it's it takes a lot of Jimmy Neutron brain power. But not a lot of people. Most if I asked ten people, I put nine people could not name me that Sixers starting five. The entire starting five. And I'll, I'll give you one extra. They couldn't name me that starting five and one player that came off that bench. That's how great Allen Iverson was. He took that team to the NBA Finals and beat the Lakers in, in game one. Yes, they ultimately lost, but you still beat the Lakers. That That's saying something. That Iverson was, was on another level, man. Like, for real. So, my next player. I almost left him off this list. This next player. Because I forgot. I was about to put on dirt. It was either going to be Dirt and Whiskey or this player. But I had to go with the 2005, 2006 Steve Nash. And I am starting to believe. I know starting. I believe that Mike D'Antoni is the ultimate cheat code for, for for offensive guards. Like look at look at what he did with Steve Nash. But man, that was the you know two time MVP. He would have been three time MVP if he didn't if he wasn't the runner up to Dirt and Whiskey. He's one of the greatest offensive point guards ever. But before. Mike D'Antoni came. He was good, and he was known for like, – he never wanted to shoot. I remember that. Especially when he played for Dallas, he never wanted to shoot. In fact, Pop, Greg Popovich schemed where they would leave him open because he wouldn't shoot. And that's the same player. And I'm not saying he wouldn't shoot because he couldn't. He just – his mindset was get his teammates, you know, or assist his teammates or give teammates open. He wouldn't shoot. You get paired with Mike D'Antoni, you become a two-time MVP. You are you join the 50-40-90 club. You average 19, 11, and 4. You lead the Suns to the Western Conference Finals. The Suns to the Western Conference Finals. Yes, I think that. If it wasn't for Mike D'Antoni, Steve Nash wouldn't be as good as, or we wouldn't view Steve Nash as good as he is. But he had Mike D'Antoni. And Steve Nash is unarguably one of the greatest offensive point guards we've ever seen in the NBA. Stats-wise show it. The eye test shows it. Steve Nash is, is and his his arc from, you know, Phoenix, I mean, uh, from Dallas to Phoenix was crazy. You went from a player that all he wanted to do was get an assist to a player that he'll still give you, he'll still give you 20 assists, but he'll also give you 40 points. Mike D'Antoni's Chico. Hell, you see what Mike D'Antoni's doing with James Harden? He got him MVP. Mike D'Antoni made Jeremy Lin a household name. People forget Mike D'Antoni was with Jeremy Lin in the whole insanity thing. Mike, but Steve Nash had to be on this list. Preferably the 2005-2006 one when he led Sean Marion and uh, and Amari Stoudemire to the NBA Western Conference Finals, where they would have won if it wasn't for uh, Amari getting suspended because Steve Nash got hip checked. <laughs> By Robert Horry and like Amari wasn't having that. So, yeah, I couldn't leave him off this list, man. I couldn't leave Steve Nash off this list. He's, he's, no. Like, when you talk about the top point guards from year 2000 to 2019, you don't, you can't go too, too far without putting in Steve Nash's name in there. And if you do go far, you don't know sports. 
that's just, that's just how I see it. Uh, my next player was D. Wade. In 2008, 2009, yes, yes, yes. I know he won the championship in 2006, but I think 2009 or 8 and 2009 was the apex of his scoring, of of his uh, of of him scoring. My man was k killing. And two, people forget Sweaty Wade. That's when the that's when the uh, the <laughs> the Heat jerseys would get would turn from red to like maroon because they were sweating so much. You remember that? I believe it was it was nasty, man. But that D Wade was on another level. He finished third that year in, in MVP voting to, to Kobe. I mean, to LeBron and Kobe. Uh, that year, he had his career high fifty five points against the Knicks. And again, D Wade, and I was talking about this. When D Wade was saying, you know, this is last year and everything. Can I name five shooting guards better than D Wade? That's what I got asked. Like they asked me the question. And I realized I couldn't name three small shooting guards better than Co uh D Wade. And while Allen Iverson is my favorite player of all time, I think D Wade was a little better. No, D Wade wasn't a little better. D Wade was better. D Wade has three rings, one of which he was leaps and bounds the best player in that series, which is 2006 against Dallas. He's been he was able to adapt it or he's he's a poster child of how your game adapts. No, he never turned into the greatest shooter ever, but he went from being the man with Shaq. Well, he was he, all right, he went from being the man to being the man with Shaq, but taking a back seat until the finals when they realized, oh, we they need my ass. <laughs> then going from being the man. With Shaq to taking a back seat with LeBron, and people was like, "I mean, LeBron James is the greatest player. Like, of course you're gonna take a back seat. That's hard taking a back seat when it's been your team since you got in the league in 2003. That's challenging. Imagine you, you. Let me see. Imagine you, you. Oh, boom." Imagine you having a co-worker, like your best, like you, you, you've been the man for the longest at your job, right? And then one day, corporate comes and says, hey, your best friend who you know is a better salesman than you comes to your firm or comes to your job. You know what I'm saying? you like, of course it's going to be like, I don't want to step on any tones or anything. But you know, yo, if we're going to get some advances, we need to sell some, some stuff and they're the best at doing it. That's 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 what happened, man. And D Way, I can't, I can't, I think I just put on wax. Greatest, best small four, best shooting guards of all time. My top five, in no particular order except for one, two, and three. <laughs> Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, D Wade, Allen Iverson, and. Jerry West. And the only reason why I say Jerry West is because he's a logo. And Jerry West had some crazy, crazy performances. Now, of course, if we're talking about, you know, there's there's some couple there's a couple shooting guards I can put up there, but I have to respect Jerry West. But D D Ray is kind of like Shaq. You can't go too far. We're talking about the greatest small forwards ever. I mean, greatest shooting guards ever or greatest centers ever without talking about D-Wade and Shaq. So I had to leave D-Wade on this list. Um, Another player, see, I had to give this man props, the next player on my list, because outside of Scottie Pippen, I don't think there's – ever been a better on-ball defender than the 2016-2017 Kawhi Leonard. 
I think he's a, like, and of course, if you believe I'm wrong, leave it in the comments or shoot me a DM or no, don't shoot me a DM. Leave, leave it in the comments. <laughs> but I don't think that there was a better. I don't think outside of you know. Scottie Pippen, I think Kawhi Leonard is the second best on ball defender. Kawhi Leonard, <laughs> in 2016 17, Kawhi Leonard led the Spurs. The same Spurs that still had Tim Duncan, Mono Ginobili, Tony Parker. He led the Spurs to the NBA Finals. That year, he averaged 26 points, 6 rebounds, and 4 assists. And I believe he averaged three, like 2.1 steals, I believe. Or maybe 2.3 steals. And nobody, not n nobody, even his family, couldn't imagine Kawhi Leonard growing into what he is then and what he is now. Like what he is back in 2016 and what he is now from his rookie year. I mean, rookie year, all he was was a defender. That's it. Like, he couldn't do any. I'm not going to say he, he couldn't do anything else. Fuck it. He couldn't do anything else. Now, and especially in 2016, 17, where they beat LeBron James. And while he didn't strap LeBron James down because LeBron James still averaged like 30 that, that series. There were, it was it was clear. It was LeBron James, and then Kawhi Leonard in that series. I'm not saying of all time. LeBron James and Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard was the second best player in that series, hands down. And and he he won the NBA Finals MVP because of that. In fact, now I think about it, except for one player on my list. Everybody on my team has won an MVP or a Finals MVP. Shout, shout out, shout out. That's what, that's what I'm saying, man. That's why I had to leave players like Gilbert Arenas, James Hart, well, James Harden, like Gilbert Arenas, T Mac, and Paul Pierce out. Like, who? From all the player players I've said, maybe maybe you can argue to Kawhi. Who? Who are you taking off for T Mac? Who are you taking off for Dirk? Who are you taking off for Paul Pierce? Who are you taking off for Anthony Davis? Who are you taking off for James Harden, Russell Westbrook, and my man Gilbert? Like, nobody. But back to Kawhi, man. Kawhi, Kawhi, Kawhi's still growing. Kawhi right now is hoping for Toronto. Trying to get them, trying to get them L.A. checks, man. <laughs> but that 2016-2017 Kawhi was something unbelievable. And I, I can argue. Wait. I'm tired, yo. So, correction. Kawhi did not win the championship in 2016, 2017. I believe he won it in 2014, 15. I'm going to look it up, guys. I, I am like 100% sure, but not 100% sure. 2013 14, yes, I was correct because I was where the cramps. Yeah, that was it. But 2016 2017, he led the Spurs to the Western Conference Finals. And dang, I'm tired, yo. <laughs> Man, I got a script and everything, and I'm reading off the script. Whatever. <sighs> he led the 2016-2017 Spurs that didn't have. Well, even in 2013, let's let's talk about it real quick. Even in 2013-2014, he was the best player on that team with a Tim Duncan, with Kwa, you know, uh, Tony Parker, with Mont Ginobili. 2016-17, he didn't have none of them. He had LaMarcus Aldridge and led the Spurs all the way to the Western Conference Finals, which they they were up by, what, 20 points against Golden State before Zaza did what Zaza does and injured him, pretty much sealing his fate for that series and his – damn, look how crazy. Look how, look how 
crazy things change from that play when Kawhi, well, that game where Kawhi Leonard twisted his ankle twice, pretty much. Essentially knocking him out the playoffs and only playing nine games the next year. To how they went from that to I don't want to be in San Antonio no more. I think I believe y'all lied to me. To all the like that that play just was a snowball effect of terribleness, man. <laughs> For real, jeez. But yeah, 2016-2017 Kawhi was crazy. And I, and I say that because I think that was his apex of offense. Now, 2013-2014, when they won the NBA championship, like I said, I, and everything I said was 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 right. It's just the year. You know, 2013-14, uh, that's the year. It was LeBron in the finals, and then Kawhi was right under him. But 2016-17, he was, he was just a beast. In fact... He finished third, third in MVP voting. Kawhi Leonard is a monster that doesn't talk. That's, and that's that's crazy. Um, the next player moving on was 2003-2004 Kevin Garnett. I was about to say arguably Kevin Garnett's the most intense player the NBA has ever seen. No, get Charles Charles Barkley, not Charles Barkley, Charles Oakley all the way the hell out of here. All he did was, like, fought people. But Kevin Garnett was intense, man. And Kevin Garnett was, Kevin Garnett, there was a real argument one time, or a couple years, between who was better, like, who was better between him and Tim Duncan. Kevin Garnett was... While he's not as athletic as Anthony Davis, he was the previous generation's Anthony Davis. Winning the MVP, he won the MVP 2003-2004. He was a great two-way player. He could score with the best of them, and he will defend the hell out of anyone. We all saw the videos of him screaming at everybody. (laughs) He always screaming at somebody, man. No, he's having these like deep metaphors, but like real hood metaphors. Like, yeah, man, don't let another let another dog eat off your plate. <laughs> it's like DMX or something. <laughs> man, Kevin Garnett was cold, man. Kevin Garnett's one of my favorite players of all time. One of my favorite because I just love the way his approach to the game. You see, he was he was the difference maker for the 2008 Celtics, man. When him and Ray Allen went, yes, Ray Allen was important. Paul Pierce was their best player, but without Kevin Garnett, they wouldn't have won nothing. And they would have they would have went the year the the next year if it wasn't for injuries that just ran through their team, like. Kevin Garnett is cold, man. I love, I love me some Kevin Garnett, man. He single-handedly carried that that year, two thousand three, two thousand four. He carried the Timberwolves, which is another. I will give you a hundred dollars if you can, without looking it up, if you can name me the starting five for that Timberwolves team. Just like I really can't name a starting five for the 2000-2001 76ers starting five without, you know, if you can't name the whole starting five, I know you can't name the whole starting five for the 2003-2004 Timberwolves unless you live in Minnesota. Like, ain't no way. That's how great Kevin Garnett was. And Kevin Garnett maintained greatness for a long time. It was really injuries and age that caught up to him. But it really wasn't even injuries. It was really age that caught up to him. You know, your body, which I I guess you can say injuries because his body started breaking down. So, but Kevin Garnett, 2003, 2004, Kevin Garnett was, well, he's always, he was always an intense, tense player. You, the funniest video of all time is when homie shot the ball. (laughs) Kevin Garnett was in the, was in the bench. He said, hell no, trash ass nigga. <laughs> that, that was Kevin Garnett. That's Kevin Garnett in a nutshell. Kevin Garnett wasn't even playing. He wasn't even suited up. The man actually he had a suit. He didn't even have a jersey. And said that to a player. I believe it was Wesley Johnson. Like 
I love me some Kevin Garnett, man. Oh, man. And lastly, and this, uh, I know this is going to be controversial. I don't care. But my last player for my squad, all decade plus, from 2000 to 2019, was 2010 and 2011, Dwight Howard. And I'm going to tell you why I put him on this list. Because there was no argument. Or there shouldn't have been an argument between who was the best center from 2004 to 2012. Dwight Howard, the man was one of the most athletic players that ever ever played the NBA, ever. He was one of the best defenders to ever play of the low post, not, not like on ball, low post. He's one of a few players to win consecutive, I'm not consecutive, win multiple, three times. Like, he's won three Defensive Player of the Years. In 2010-2011, which is why I put this year instead of 2008-2009, which which was, that was one, like a tough debate. Because 2008-2009, he carried a team with Jermail, Jameer Nelson, Mikhail Petrus, Hito Turkoglu to the NBA Finals against, and then went up against Kobe and the Lakers, which they ultimately lost. The man went to the Celtics, you know, the big three Celtics. He also went through LeBron James and the Cavaliers to make it to the Finals as the best center in the league. But again, the reason why I put 2010, 2011, because if you remember that year, Dwight Howard was on another level, bro. He finished second MVP to Derrick Rose, which if you ask majority of the NBA analysts out there, they they know Dwight Howard should have won that MVP. It was just Derrick Rose, you know, youngest MVP. He was he had a great story. He was he was unlike something we've ever seen. Athletic wise, as a point, but Dwight Howard was it, man. <laughs> I know it's controversial. Like how you put Dirk, how how you not put Dirk or T Mac over Dwight or something like that. But again, from that's almost ten years. That's eight for eight years. There was no question who was the best big man in the league. None. And you can even debate. And this is why I hate talking to people about sports sometimes. Because they, it's like, he has a stigma. But they don't really look at the, the, the performance. Dwight Howard is cold, bruh. Even with the Lakers, he was dealing with entry. But he, alongside Kobe, because Steve Nash really didn't even play. He, alongside Kobe, still got them to the, uh, the playoffs. And when Kobe was out, Dwight Howard was still killing in the playoffs. He just had he really had a bad shoulder injury in the back. In fact, let's look at all the places he's been, except for the Wizards, because that hasn't even really panned out too well. He played for Orlando. To me, to, due to the longevity, it's an argument between him and Shaq, who the best center is for Orlando's history. Then he goes to Houston or he goes to LA. It didn't work in L.A., but he still helped them get to the playoffs, and he still was productive as hell for that team. He just dealt with injuries. Then he goes to Houston. He, alongside James Harden, make it to the Western Conference Finals. He also, the year that they were just, the next year they were just terrible. Like, everybody hated each other on that team, and they still made it to the playoffs. And had a really solid round against Portland. If it wasn't for Chandler Parsons trash ass to you can't defend, they would have made it past Portland. Then he goes to Atlanta. No. Yeah, he goes to Atlanta. He's productive for them. He has a couple 20-20 games. 25-25 games. 
Then he goes to Charlotte. He still had a 30-20 game. Or 30-30. Did he have a 30-30 game? I'm looking it up, guys. Dwight had a 30-30 game. This was last year. You know, the, the Dwight's Walsh had 32 points, 30 rebounds. 30-30. What I'm saying is, yeah, you might want to bag on the player or his personality, but you cannot. If you really look at Dwight Howard on the floor, Dwight Howard, like I said before in, in one of my podcasts, in fact, it was a whole unpopular topic, Dwight Howard is in Hall of Famer, and Dwight Howard, there, it would behoove me to leave him on off this list. Yes, it was hard leaving Dirk out and leaving Tracy out, but for nearly a ten-year span, there was no question. It wasn't like, all right, one year is Dwight, one year it's um, Andrew Bynum. No, Dwight Howard was the best center in the league, and it wasn't even close. And that's why he's on my list. And there you have it, guys, man. That was fun. That was long, but that was fun. <laughs> that was my all-decade team. Just to just to go a little quick, my complete team is Steph Curry at the you know Steph Curry 2015, 2016, Kobe Bryant 2005, 2006, uh, 2012, 2013 LeBron James, 2002, 2003 Tim Duncan, 2000, 2001 Shaq. 2013, 2014, Kevin Durant. 2000, 2001, Allen Iverson. 08, 09, D. Wade. 2016, 2017, Kawhi Leonard. 03, 04, Kevin Garnett. 2010, 2011, Dwight Howard. And 04, I mean 05, 06, Steve Nash. I had fun. Uh, again, I want to wish you guys a happy holidays, happy New Year's. I'm, I'm gonna take a break. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a quick break. I'm probably take a minute, a week or two break. You know, get some get some new content together. Uh, I'm not gonna drop a podcast on the 31st. Cause I know ain't nobody. I'm already being risky dropping it a day before Christmas. <laughs> now I know ain't nobody about to listen to a podcast, which is probably gonna be like an hour thirty, hour forty five minutes. Ain't nobody about to listen to that on November, um, New Year's Eve. So again. I want to thank you guys for tuning in to the Unpopular Podcast. This is your boy Jalen Hunter. Uh, again, man, this has been fun. I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a break. And happy New Year's, happy, happy. I don't know, if, you know, holidays. And until until next year, man. I will see you guys in 2019. Much love. Every time the weekend comes, yeah, I know that it won't be long. Talk about you need closure. Too many missed calls, too many texts. Damn, I wish I missed my ex. Every time the weekend comes, yeah, I know that it won't be long. Mr. Telephone Man, tell Mrs. Instagram I'm blocking you from both of them to stop her thirsty ass. And thinking about me's got to be the topic of your friends, but thinking about me's not what you was on when we was there. I ain't beg you to change, you dressing on and watch, waiting for you to change. You way too focused on dollars, your favorite rappers are bumming, I'm hating by that, you're minus. Your pussy average, your best of your conversation is garbage. That's why you stay with your mama, that's why you stay in some drama, that's why you stay by yourself, cause you hurt the people that love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, but fuck you, goodbye. And I'm saying whatever to hurt you when not for an eye, yeah. Or the Hollywood women addicted to attention So what that tell you about a couple of them that's trying to get in And not to mention they can replace you with light quickness Ain't no fighting makeup, they on the way to the right nigga Weekend is over, turn up is no more And she begins to sober up Reeks, she's from Uber saying where the fuck you was And that seat got you know what, now you call